Hello everyone! Today I thought I showed you how I draw with the mouse. So even though I actually have a tablet, a very old Wacom Bamboo from 2008 that barely functions anymore, mostly due to incompatible drivers, I've been drawing with the mouse since I started drawing digitally and I have used tablet a little bit, but I just found a workflow that works for me and I'm very comfortable with it. And I thought I'd show you that because in case you can't afford a tablet or don't want to get one for whatever reason, that doesn't mean you can't still draw digitally. And there's a bit of a trick that I'm going to show you, but this is not going to be exactly a tutorial because most of what I'm doing hinges on using the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator. And if you're not familiar with how to use that, it can be a bit tricky. And I don't want to make this a huge video, so I'm not going to concentrate on that right now. But if you're interested in some kind of tutorial, I can do that, just let me know. So all that I'm going to use for this demo is pen and paper, my mouse, my Adobe Illustrator, and that's it, really. <laughs> so let's get started. Today I thought I'd draw something Easter related because it's Easter, why not spring stuff? It's nice, it's fun. And I'm going to start by making a sketch with pen and paper. This is in a way maybe the most important step because everything else hinges on that, the actual drawing happens on the paper and everything else is just digital tracing. So that's the secret. To get the creative juices flowing a little bit, I'm going to Google some Easter images just to get an idea. Because especially now that I'm locked at home, I'm not going around looking at stores and decorations and getting into that mood. So my brain needs a little bit of waking up. So I'm starting Google and writing Easter. So I'm liking this idea with the basket with eggs. So I guess we're going to have that. I'm sketching very loosely right now. It's not important. Just getting some ideas. The good thing of <coughs> later tracing in Illustrator is that you can fix quite a lot of problems. I would want some plants around. <sighs> How about some bunnies? Let's see. Yep, maybe a bunny. It's actually a bit boring, so it's not really that much inspiration, but that's fine. I can <clears throat> use our imaginations. Oh, I like these flowers. Let's keep them in mind. Let's add some chickens. Yeah, maybe not that kind. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm being quiet, but it's a bit hard to draw and talk at the same time. Okay, 
Now I have a bit of a messy sketchbook page, which I can already use, but to make this video a little more clear, I'm going to take a, another sheet of paper and clean up the mess and make more of a scene out of it, so that it makes a little more sense. Okay, now that I have a scene that I'm happy with, what I would normally do is take a picture of it or scan it if I have a scanner and transfer it to the computer where it's going to be the basis of my illustration. So let's do that. I'm going to now start Illustrator so we can start tracing. It's actually already started and I'm going to create a new document and Let's take this square one, you can easily put it on Instagram. I always use the ruler, but I don't really use it, but I like how the workspace looks with it. And then I'm going to paste the image from my folder, just like that. I need to adjust the size. to lock this layer, make a new layer, and start tracing. I always go for, I get rid of those colors because I don't like them, but for tracing I usually like to go with a color that has a good contrast with the background, so yeah, that will do well. And the color doesn't matter, we're going to fix that later on. My image is a bit blurry, but it's not a problem at all. I'm going to start tracing using the pen tool. And again, this is not going to be about the pen tool. I can explain that in another video. If you would like to see that, let me know. So this can be a long and somewhat tedious process. So I'm going to speed all that up so that we are not here all day. Well, I'm probably going to be here all day, but you don't have to. Sometimes uh, I cover the upper parts like those in a different stroke cover so that I can find them more easily later.
Okay, um, I decided that I'm probably also going to use the flowers from the initial sketches. So I'm going to paste those down here. So I'll probably trace that as well a little later on. And that's a very handy thing that you can piece together an illustration this way. And remember we are still only using the mouse. So what I want to do is uh, probably later on maybe trace those ones if I feel like I don't have enough grass in the original scene. I'm going to trace these ones and add them to this illustration because, you know, when you select your elements you can easily move them around so you can put together a scene that originally just wasn't together. <laughs> but we'll see if we're going to do that. I just want to have the option right here. And for now we're going to lock this layer again and we're going to go back on top and continue tracing tracing. Like in this case, this flower doesn't look very well. I think, I think that the one I had, yeah, this one. No, this one looks better, so I'm going to trace that and drag it up there instead. Cutting this flower and pasting it here. I will open the book just in case to make things easier. Yep, something like this.
So, I have now outlined the whole illustration and it's time to fill those outlines, those shapes, and to rearrange them in a way that makes sense for the illustration. The yellow lines in this case are going to be closed shapes, so we are going to fill those with white and arrange them on top of each other, and the pink ones, yes, the pink ones, those are just open shapes. For the time being we'll leave them as it is. So what happens with those filled shapes is that they're going to be something a little bit like cutouts of paper. Like if you cut out shapes from colorful paper and you arrange them on top of each other in a way that makes sense and creates an illustration, that's what we're going to do in this case because right now they are not arranged, they're going to be a bit of a mess. But after we fill them, we'll see what should go where, so we have to keep in mind the overall look of the illustration and arrange them in a way that will make sense. So that's what we're doing in this step. I'm actually going to change the yellow outlines to something darker so I can see better because once I fill it with white, the contrast isn't as good anymore. And I can, I can easily do that when I select all the same shapes and then I can change the color. Actually, this is why all of the same closed shapes have one color outline and all the open uh, shapes have another, so I can easily select all of them and don't have to go and do it manually for each and every one of them. So now I have arranged all of the layers as they have to be in the correct order so the picture makes sense. And next I'm giving all the outlines a bit of um, effect, I guess you could say. And that would be a charcoal effect or a pencil stroke texture because I want it to look textured and handmade and that's how I achieved that. It looks a little bit too strong at the moment, but I'm going to vary the thickness and in some cases I'm going to give it a bit of a different profile so it looks more balanced. And after that I'm going to start to work on the colors and towards finishing this piece. Now I'm going into color and finishing. I'm going to go for a for my regular go-to palette that I usually use for quick sketching and just when I don't want to think too hard about color because this is just a simple demonstration. I don't want to make it too complicated. If uh, it is something more complicated, I will go into shading and all of that and creating the color palette, but we're not going to do this right now because I don't want this to be a huge video.
So I ended up changing the illustration a little bit. I removed the bunny because it was just horrible. It wasn't working. I was really rushing through this because I wanted to get it done in one day. These things take time. <laughs> So bunny's gone. Uh, I rearranged the grass a little bit, uh, moved things a little bit as you saw and that's it. That's my process. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions and if you want to know more about the specific steps, if I should do more of a deep dive of um, pen tool or cowers or whatever. But yeah. Talk to me in the comments, let me know if you've liked the video by giving me a like and I will see you next time. Until then, have fun!